and doesn't start right away. Because of that casual people see mushrooms growing where rust is dense and started to believe the mushroom keepers spread rust. Paul still refuses to believe Bisco and they continue their fight. She blames him for growing mushrooms in cities as vengeance for prosecuting mushroom keepers. Bisco denies it, stating he is looking for Russ Eater. Jabby explains that there is a legendary mushroom born from the prayers of a dying hero and is able to completely absorb even the deepest rust, be it from man or machine. Bisco used the time they talked to grow some mushroom on her pole, making her lose her weapon and then knocks her out with an arrow. He takes her to Milo and Jabby, but is surprised to see that Jabby is fine and moving already. Milo then sees Paul and explains it's his older sister. Bisco explains he used some knockout poison mushrooms and Milo can give her some of the medicine he gave Jabby to make her feel better. Jabby tells them they need to move or they won't be able to escape and tells Bisco that he will distract the enemy. Bisco disagrees and also explains that even if he finds the Rust Eater, he will need someone to synthesize the medicine. Jabby then points to Milo. Understanding what is going on, Milo asks Bisco to take him with him. While Jabby goes to distract the Imehama watch, Bisco and Milo head towards the north gate and Bisco uses a mushroom to launch them and jump over the gate. Bisco and Milo continue their journey on foot. Bisco then notices a crab claw and Actigawa comes out of the ground. They get on it, but Actigawa throws Milo away. Bisco states he forgot that Actigawa hates doctors and gives him a new pair of clothes to wear. After changing clothes, Milo introduces himself to Actigala and tries to get on, but it throws him off again. They continue traveling with Milo, following on foot the crab. They reach the Nikko War Memorial and decide to sleep there for the night. As they enter the building, they see Tyrol is there. Bisco recalls seeing her in Imahama, but as Tyrol turns, she seems like she is chalking. Milo realizes there is something in her stomach. He then kisses Tyrol and manages to pull out a balloon worm. The next day, Milo realizes that Tyrol was gone and had taken all of his money. He then sees that Tyrol had left them food for the money she took. They continue their journey and while crossing a dried up sea, they see a watermelon. Bisco runs to get it, but a kid takes it before him. He manages to get him, but then another kid shoot at them. Looking for Bisco and Milo, Paolo reaches Shimotsuka. Nuts believes that Bisco and Milo are kidnappers sent by Kurokawa. Bisco explains they are headed towards Akita and that he is also willing to buy food from them. Nuts doesn't believe. Having no choice, Bisco reveals a wanted poster of himself and states that if they bring him alive to Imahama, they will get a reward. The children then restrain Bisco and Milo and take them to their town, where Nuts promises they will receive food and water until they hand them over the authorities. Nuts leaves Plum to look after Milo. Milo notices that there are no adults in town and that everyone is armed and Plum explains that each winter they are attacked by flying blowfish and several people are eaten each year. Milo notices something on Plum's arm who states everyone has it and it's rusting according to Imahama army. Milo wonders what Korokawa is doing but tells Plum that this isn't rusting disease. The children call Nuts, telling him that Milo had healed them all. Suddenly the blowfish attacks in midsummer. The kids start fighting the fish but are unable to do anything. As one of them catches Kusuke, Bisco jumps on it and splits it in two using the harpoon. He then gives the harpoon to Nuts, telling him that this is how he should use it. Bisco then jumps down and calls Aktagawa and Milo. Korokawa finds traces of Jabi and realizes he is alive. Bisco and Milo reach Shimabuki land encased in snow. As they are freezing, Bisco notices a pile of snow with something coming out of it and as he pulls it, they find Tyrol, who was nearly frozen to death. They make a camp for Tyrol to recover. Milo then notices a trader's camp and they head towards it. They manage to make a good trade for a dried giant eel and get some warm clothes along with a book. They reach the Kitsumizaka station, but the entrance is frozen. Bisco asks Actagal, who easily breaks the ice. As they explore the subway, they find a train that seems to be able to run. Tyrol asks for some time to make the train run. Milo and Tyrol check the field guide book they got from the traders, and as they see drawn on a variety of animals, they wonder what kind of book it is. Bisco states is drawn by a mushroom keeper as the drawing style is unique to the mushroom keepers. Milo sees a page mentioning Russ Ear. He then reads that the pipe snake with common name Two Worm can fly and often eats large prey like helicopters and fighters. With the train ready to run, Tyrol decides to go a different way. Milo wonders how they can capture a pipe snake, but then a large group of oil squids attack them. Bisco and Milo fight them. Bisco then shoots an arrow ahead of the train, which causes the oil squids to drop from the train. As they leave the tunnel, they find themselves in the Weeping Child Ravine. Down the cliff, Milo notices mushrooms and blue smoke. Bisco explains its spores and that mushroom keepers harvested the rust eater here 15 years ago. A large bird then comes and grabs the oil squid, but then a giant pipe snake comes out and eats the bird. 
This cook gets on the other side.